Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Vocast. I'm your host, Ethan Drew, and today we've got a yet another episode of the Vocast. Today, our guest is Mr. Davide. Say hello, my friend. Hey, how are things, guys? So, uh, for those that do not know Davide, he is a young bass singer who has quickly gained traction in the TikTok industry for his duets and other music content. Very talented singer. We're excited to have him today. Guys, we're going to have him give a quick elevator pitch as soon as I get through this promo section right here. So if you guys are enjoying the content, make sure you drop a thumbs up, drop a comment down below. It helps with the algorithm. Make sure you subscribe, hit the bell, make sure you're notified every time I post. And uh, yeah, Davide, tell us a little bit about yourself, a bit of an elevator pitch as to what you do on TikTok. Okay, fine. Uh, so first of all, I'm 18. I live in Italy and... I started posting videos on TikTok about two years and two months ago. And it started like, it it was random as everything you start that, you know, has success. And I started posting duets using my phone and my earbuds. But with time, I got more serious with it. Like I bought a microphone. I started using DaVinci Resolve to mix my videos. And after um, five Eight months, I got my first formal video, and from there it was pretty much, I wouldn't say downhill, obviously, but viral videos start coming by always more often than before, and yeah, it was around November of last year that uh, I, I posted Made You Loop that got a ton of views, and yeah, yeah it, then I started considering to seriously... Um, pursue the path of music uh before it, it was just a hobby before but then it became you know my passion and i would consider it my job right now and it, it's it, it, it has given me a lot of beautiful things a lot of i learned a lot with it and yeah i pretty much post based duets on tiktok i found a video i find a video i like and just had a harmony to it I mix my videos and that's pretty much what I do. I also have original music. I released three songs so far. Um, two of them are uh, like two different versions of the same song. The, the song is called Before Blues Control. And I released also a full cover of When the Party's Over by Billie Eilish. I really love that song. And yeah, that's pretty much what I do. I It's what, you know, keeps, keeps me being happy every day. <laughs> There you go. Guys, we are excited to have him today. If you are excited to learn more about him and hear about his music journey, like I said, make sure you drop a like, subscribe, and we're going to dive right into this. So first question, Davide, uh, what is your favorite or preferred drink? Your preferred, sorry? So what is your favorite or preferred drink or something that you like to drink? Oh, okay. Uh, I mean, I I would say sparkling water. Oh, that's the first. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Second one, beer. Absolutely. I, I love beer. What's the legal drinking age in Italy? Uh, 18. 18? Okay. But you start much earlier than you should. <laughs> people don't don't care about the legal age. <laughs> oh, yeah. Totally different over here where I'm from. Yeah, I know, uh, like, the law, especially, like, for, you know, for, like, when there's a determinate age to do something... In America, it's like people are really strict about it, right? Mm-hmm. Yes, yeah. they are indeed. All right, so we're going to start jumping into the music portion of the podcast. So the next question leads us into this. So it's pretty broad. Answer it how you feel like you want to. So what or who got you into music? Okay, it's a, it's a pretty complicated story, I would say. There's... No one in particular. I I always had like a propension for music. Like, like when when I was little, my my own, who's a uh, she's an opera singer, noticed like had a perfect beat, but I never like uh, you know uh, actually I never cared about it. Like I never cared about music until I was fifteen. It was mm-hmm. during quarantine, and yeah, I, I was starting to get you know passionate about beatbox. So I started learning like the you know the basics throat yeah. bass, basic sounds. And one day I was watching an acapella video. Uh, no, wait, I was watching a beatbox tutorial. And then uh, like uh, 
Mo and I Medley by Voice Play I, appeared into my, you know, into my homepage. I, I just clicked it, and yeah, I fell in love with the bass, and that's pretty much how it started. <laughs> in the same <laughs> period, I was also watching a lot of covers because, like, I, I lo- a lot of set covers. I I was fifteen, and as you know, fifteen years old are set for everything. So, oh yeah, yeah, I I was starting to get passionate. Like I I was really starting to like it, and yeah, that's pretty much how it started. I started watching bass singing video, slow notes, I found out I had perfect pitch. I started practicing sub harmonics and one year and a half later I started I started posting on TikTok. That's pretty awesome. So you found out you had perfect pitch when you were fifteen, right? Yeah. Yeah. It so I, I'm, you're the first person I've had on the podcast that knows that has perfect pitch. So I'm going to ask you something kind of personal. So how does it feel having perfect pitch? Is it is it fun to you? Because sometimes it sucks. I, I I'm one of those people where I'm like sometimes it sucks. <laughs> you have perfect pitch too? Uh, yes, I do. Um, oh, okay, that's nice. That's nice. Uh, I mean, it's great for me. Like sometimes harmony just builds up in your head and. You can identify every sound you hear. Like you, you hear, I don't know, a motorcycle passing, and you, okay, that's a C. A, <laughs> a, a flat C. It's not a like a, a C C. It's a flat C. Yeah, it it's sometimes <laughs> it's, so fun. it's fun. Sometimes it's annoying, but yeah, overall, yeah. it's fun. Yeah. Guys, that don't y'all if y'all don't have perfect pitch, it's it's fine. I mean, but the thing is, like, it's not always incredible having perfect pitch because sometimes if you want to like get away from music for a few minutes you can hear a motorcycle passing by and you'll hear a c and you're just like uh i wish i could just not focus on it (laughs) but that's a c but that's a c (laughs) it's it's a horrible feeling but it's a cool feeling all at the same time yeah and and you start like uh, there's a game i do like when i'm bored when I'm at school, instead of like listening to what my teacher is saying, I listen to the note they speak in. <laughs> and I noticed like pretty much all women have the same pretty range of speaking range. They yeah. usually speak from F sharp three to maybe C five and some like like you know when they talk louder and they hit a lot of high notes. Yeah. yeah. That's their range. Yeah. Yeah, it's annoying definitely. for a different reason. You, you you get distraught you get this distracted by every sound because you want to, your brain is instant is instantaneously identifies it yeah i i hear a door creak and i'm sitting here thinking oh that's an e yeah that's it, a, definitely an e yeah it's it's a little frustrating but i loved it i love it nonetheless i mean <laughs> yeah, it I took it took me a while because i was actually in high school close to your age when i realized i had perfect pitch okay so I'm kind of in the same bandwagon when it comes to that, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's a, it's a true blessing. I love it. Yeah. So, mm, yeah. So the next question I have for you, uh, who are some of the most influential figures in your life? So people that had the biggest effect on you, both in your commu- music career, as well as just your life in general. Um, well, my parents have, I so have always been super supportive. Like when they found out I was posting TikTok videos, they were, I mean, they really liked them. They saw I was putting passion and effort into it and they supported me. Like they bought me a microphone. They, my father taught me how to use DaVinci Resolve because he, he really loves doing uh, short movies. Uh, yeah. Is it, yeah. And yeah, he, he did one. It was pretty good. And yeah, he knew how to use DaVinci. So he, he taught me how to use it. Also, my girlfriend always encouraged me to, yeah, to, to post. She she made me download TikTok, and at first I I hated TikTok. I, I remember I hated TikTok because I thought yeah it's for stupid people. They just do dances. Then I I, I literally <laughs> use it one hour, and 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 I'm, and I'm like <laughs> all the time. <laughs> yeah, I remember <clears throat> hating TikTok also when I first got it. I remember I was. Do you remember it from back when it was musically? Oh yes, I do. Oh, the olden days. Yeah. They, for those that don't know what we're talking about, um, the app that he used and the app that he's famous on or is getting famous on is called TikTok. And before it was named TikTok, it was called Musically. And on this app, 
you couldn't do a whole lot other than pretty much dance and uh, yeah. do video transitions. That was about it. And it was and, awful. Yeah, it was. <laughs> All you saw were terrible. people dancing and, and everything. But yeah. I do love how much it's evolved and how different it's gotten, how much more creative yeah. you can be. It's awesome. I feel like all social medias are like becoming the same thing. Yeah. Instagram has taken a lot of from TikTok and TikTok has taken a lot from Instagram and YouTube as well. Like they're mm -hmm. kind of mixing each other, taking the best from one another and yeah. becoming all the same thing. They're all competing. They saw TikTok yeah. as success succeeding very handily with the whole like 15 second and one minute video thing. And they're like, yeah. I want to do that too. So they start doing it. Shorts and reels. Mm -hmm. Shorts and reels. So um, what is something that one of those influential figures that you mentioned has said to you that stuck with you throughout your life? Um, oh, first of all, I forgot to obviously mention like Jeff Kasselowski and Avi Kaplan, which are oh my, yes, yeah, the my, my favorite bass singers. Yeah, they're they're the best. I met Avi, and yeah, he he was super nice. He always told me like to keep going, to keep posting that I was doing great, and yeah, that made me really proud. And also, yeah, always, you know, my father, my mother, and my girlfriend always support me. Also, my entire family. There's not. A single video of mine that my mom doesn't repost on her Facebook. <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome <laughs> yeah. to see this. She's really supportive. Yeah, she's really supportive. So, um, if, is there anything that one of those people has said to you specifically that um, uh, sticks with you, like it's maybe, you remember every day? Yeah, one thing that my best friend said: "You just need time. Don't worry, things will come." Things Take will come. Don't slow your roll. Don't don't rush into yeah. things. Yeah, I I always pressure myself a lot. I always want you know the best for myself, and when oh. I don't get it, I get really frustrated. So, yeah, so I I just need to chill out, relax. And cool take your time. jets, take your time. Yeah. Folks, that is extremely important in any part of life, but especially yes. in music, especially yes, in music. Time. It takes time. It takes a lot, a lot of time. So, um, for those that don't know, do you play any instruments? And if you do, what are they? This guy so, behind me. So, <laughs> yeah, he's I got a piano. Oh? So, yeah. you got a piano. Yes, but I can only play, like, the first minute of Take Me to Church. I'm, I really should practice more. <laughs> Do you play any others, or is it just the piano? Um, no, no, it's just the piano. Okay, gotcha. I've got mine way over here off camera. I okay. don't really play much of any instruments. I kind of just do a little bit on, like, multiple. I have a guitar, oh. a, a trombone, believe it or not, oh, and, okay. and a keyboard. And I'm at the about the same skill level on all of them. I just kind of pick around and play just a little bit. But, okay, you you just know how to you know just play a little yeah. with them, get the essential things you need. Pretty much, I did play. Okay, that's nice. I did play the trombone significantly more though. Okay. So, I'm still not professional by any means, but I can play it. Okay, that sounds good. I so, I, I love trombone. Oh, it's awesome! It is the best instrument in the band, hundred percent. Yeah, it's the one that reminds me the most of bass. So, yeah, I prove. You would you would probably enjoy some like bass trombone music. You would probably enjoy that. It's yeah. awesome. Yeah, I love it when they sing like super low notes on trombones. Like they sound so so natural, so, even though it's an instrument. Meaty and resonant. Yeah. So, um, what are some things that some people may not know about you? So, you with your online life, what are some things that some of these people may not know about you, based off of the life that you live on the internet? So, like, maybe some fun hobbies that you've not told anyone about, just anything like that. Okay. Um, so, I, I've i been with my girlfriend for the past three years and one month. I really like playing Fortnite and Clash of Clans. I, I'm, I'm pretty good at, at, at both of them. I, I, like, I, the reason why 
I could do videos in the first place. It was I bought a gaming PC to play Fortnite a few years ago. Yeah. So that's how I got my, like, a good PC to start making videos. And I'm at the, I, I'm at the last year of high school. Uh, I'm not particularly good at school because I, it's, you know, it's not a thing I like to put all of my effort into. I like to put like my all like all of my effort into music making videos. Yeah. Um, some things people might not know about me. Um, that's pretty much all the basic things people don't know about me. I, I live in a small town, near, close to the main city here in Sardinia. I'm not, and even though like we have some of the beautiful like beaches in the world. I don't like going to the to the beach. Really? It, I, I yeah, I, I don't like it. Like I I get bored after one hour, and then <laughs> I want to go home because it's hot. I, I like staying in my room with the AC on, making <laughs> I don't videos, blame you. listening to music, playing video games. I'm I'm a really I I think I'm more of an introvert introvert person, but I might seem really extrovert sometimes. It's weird. I I don't even know, but. It, it depends on the context, obviously. It, yeah. And I think it's funny too. Some of the people that I've met that are in similar boats as you, that do some similar things on the internet, like myself and YouTubers, other TikTokers. It's kind of funny. Like a lot of them are actually pretty introverted. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, I think it's a, like a common trait of all content creators. It's, you know, it you know, seems we like, like it. Yeah. Yeah. We, we like staying on, on, our, our our own world to you know be better at it and put the best out of it yeah so you said you play video games so do you play any other major titles like um maybe minecraft or like call of duty series or any other big games like that no not at all i i i tried minecraft once i never liked it uh. but i'm yeah, I know. I know. Some people might hate me for this, but <laughs> I, I should try it again because it's been like nine years since the since the last time. So I might change my mind, but you know, I don't feel like it for the moment. But I might try in the future because, like, uh, there's a TikToker here in Italy who has blown up like crazy, and mm -hmm. he brought back Minecraft from like no one was considering Minecraft Minecraft before he came, and now a lot of people are playing are playing Minecraft now. And, you know, it, it seems fun. I, I might try it, actually. Yeah. If you ever want to play it sometime, let me know. I play it all the time. Sure, man. Sure. Yeah. All right. So a uh, little bit more music-related questions here again. So what are some things that you like to do in your off time when you're not recording, making content? I know you mentioned you like to do video games. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I, I've been playing, yeah, it, I go like, um, you know, there are certain periods where I play, you know, Clash of Clans, others where I play Fortnite more, others where I go crazy about other video games like I used to play in the past, like uh, Spore Galactic Adventures, have you heard, ever heard of it? Um, I don't think I have. It's the best game in history. Like, uh, I don't even know how to explain to you how it works. You, you can basically create things like creatures, animals, and like do. Uh, you can choose a planet, and you can start like from the sail stage and reach the space stage. Uh, there are a lot of missions, things to find. I I never completed the game because it's it's really hard. It's like a really complex game. Yeah. And like, it hasn't been updated since 2010. Maybe it's a pretty <laughs> old game. And yeah. I've had it like for the, it was a gift from my father for mm -hmm. uh, like the first year of elementary school. He got me this game and I I was obsessed with it. I, I, would, I would spend my days playing with it <laughs> for years. Then there was uh, SimCity. Yes, yeah, SimCity. SimCity is, is, is a banger. It's and, iconic. Yeah, yeah, you, you, you can not know it. <laughs> right. <clears throat> and then, yeah, the, 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 these are pretty much the video games I like more. Also, I forgot to say one thing I really like doing is thinking. I think a lot. I, <laughs> yeah, I, I, I think I, I sometimes 
when I like think like like that, I am I a philosopher? Like I I I come out with some of the deepest thoughts ever, but usually usually forget them and can't tell. So them. you like to do some of the deep thinking? Yeah, yeah. I'm a I'm a deep thinker. I, I think a lot, <laughs> but making videos and it's pretty much all I do. I hang out with my girlfriend almost every day. I, I don't do a lot of things. I mostly go to school, make videos, and go out with my girlfriend and then sleep. <laughs> live, live a pretty simple life. Yeah, yeah. It's a pretty chill life, yeah. Pretty simple, and the best yeah. life is a simple life, folks. Exactly. The best life is a simple life. <laughs> so, um, this is going to be a really cool question because you've, you've worked with a lot of people. So... Um, who are some of your personal favorite artists that you have collaborated with in the past? Uh, I would say Bobby Bass and Nelson and also Manav Sharma and, and Casper Fox. They are the main ones. Like, uh, yeah, Bobby Bass uh, contacted me when Hoist the Colors blew up last year. Uh, yeah. It was like a trend that started for me. And yes. I, yeah, it's one of the yes. things I go proud the most about. Yeah, it, 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 I posted the video in April and it got like no views at all at first. Yeah. And then Insomnia. I, do you know Insomnia? Vinny? I think. I think. He never shows his face. He usually does duets with. Um, he usually sings songs the octave down, uh, duetting people, like using the sound okay. of a sped up sound okay i think so i think so the, yeah yeah and yeah he edited my video and like from nothing the video gained five million views so my video <laughs> gained some views too yeah i if this happened twice i'm gonna i'm gonna um uh, reach to that uh so uh the video blows up but then nothing one month later the video starts blowing up again and I'm pretty surprised, like the video gained 1.2 million views in two days. And I'm, and I'm like, what's happening? I see more people are starting to use my sound. Like there's, there are a lot of duet chains, mostly yeah. to Insomnia's video. And yeah. then, uh, Chez Aiden, uh, who, he's this guy, he mostly posts like comic videos. Yeah. He, he has like 5 million subscribers and he duetted my video and then Bobby Bay's game. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you you should have been there when I when I like when I realized Bobby Bass just did me. He was like my my idol. I took a lot from him. Like the style yeah. of making videos, the mixing, even the poses. I assume in my videos, most of them are are taken from him. Yeah. And my my my, my Sharma, uh, he was like spamming me, bro, bro, bro. Check Instagram, check Instagram. I click on the Instagram, and I see Bobby Bass just did me. So I I was like, you know, uh, do you know Douglas? Like uh, the shop, Douglas. yeah, I where they so. sell like they sell makeup products and skincare products. I think so. I was, I was there with my girlfriend. I see the post, like I literally start dancing into the store, <laughs> and yeah, it was awesome. And yeah, then he texted me. He, he asked me if I had a mic and if we if I wanted to do a cover with him. We arranged it. It took two months and a half. To, to do it then we posted it and it blew up a lot then casper fox he's a he's a crazy arranger crazy singer he he's a tenor casper is insane yeah he he's really good and he she can sing in like every range he wants yeah and yeah he gave me the opportunity to be a part of a you know to be the bass into a couple of cover uh, the first song we did together was uh, "About Them Time" by Lizzo. Yeah, um, I was struggling a little to, you know, to record it and stuff. It was a pretty complicated period, mm -hmm. but I got a second a second chance for the latest song we did, which is a full cover of "Zombie" yeah. uh, by the Cranberries, and it was really good. The arrangement was really good. I really find myself comfortable. Uh, working with Casper and Nelson, which I'm going to talk about now. Yeah. He, yeah, we, we talk every day and we've been talking every day for the last year and a half. So yeah, he, I, I can consider him a pretty close friend. We, we, we talk a lot and he's a 
he's a good he's a good friend he's a good person and he's a crazy singer <laughs> absolutely <laughs> he absolutely. puts he puts a lot of um uh, addition and effort into especially the mixing part he improved a lot and yeah i i really uh respect him and estimate him as an artist and yeah. plus we we joke a lot we we're about it <laughs> yeah good guy and very my, talented um, and he's yeah obviously a tenor but he's there there's something that he posted in um i think it's his spotify profile it says tenor by nature based by choice or something oh, like that oh uh, that was casper <laughs> yeah yeah that's casper yeah yeah truly a yeah, crazy he really individual. Is a base by choice yeah base by choice <laughs> base by choice i i would i i couldn't find a way of saying it better uh, base by choice <laughs> yeah so, he can sing wherever he wants oh and oh, then yeah. manav manav he he's to a close friend of mine we we talk every day we talk a lot he helped me through some pretty tough times and he's a crazy mixer he's one of the best i know and plus he he's, he's a crazy arranger like if i remember like him one year ago like if one year ago i wouldn't imagine he could get this good like he he got really good he can do some crazy stuff he yeah. improved a lot of, especially on the mixing part but also on the arranging part he is getting big into the club where i'm and i'm sure we're gonna see more of him in the future I'm extremely excited to because the dude is insanely talented. Yeah, he's really good. Crazy. It's like, um, have you ever heard of Mordius on YouTube? I uh, just yes, did a podcast yes, yeah, with him a yeah, yeah, um, yeah. couple days ago. And um, he, he told me a really good way to think of uh, Casper is, um, he said, Casper's not a tenor, he's an alien. <laughs> <laughs> he's, not a, right. he's not a tenor, he's an alien. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. He he can sing like a in a in pretty low chest range like you know low second octave, and yeah. then belt like an E five like he's Mitch Mitch Grassi you know yeah exactly <laughs> it's crazy he, he can sing like Mitch Grassi and Evy Kaplan at the same time, which it it doesn't normally happen, folks. But people don't normally are not normally capable of singing this kind of range. It's just doesn't happen in nature. No, no. In, in fact, Casper is an alien. That's why <laughs> he is, in fact, an alien. <laughs> All right. Yeah, he, like some of the stuff he does, like it, it's, it's crazy. I, I, I yeah. could never think of, of some yeah. things like the one he does, the ones he does. Definitely. Okay, so um, with that said, who are some uh, artists that you would like to collaborate with in the future that you haven't collaborated with yet? Uh, I would say Jeff Castellucci, obviously. Avi Kaplan. Uh, who? Maybe David 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 Kirshner. If I ever get famous, I I would love to collab to collab with him. Yeah. Also, I, I really love Adele, Luis Capaldi. All oh, the those uh, are some big ones. Yeah, yeah. I I hope I can reach that level. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I really hope so. Thanks, man. Yeah, pretty much it. Oh, and like I mean, voice play, pentatonics, home free, all the you know, big a couple of groups. I I'd love to collaborate with them if if they knew of my existence. But <laughs> you're you're garnering a big enough following that they're going to probably notice you at some point. I hope so. What's your um, what's your follower count last time you checked? Uh, seven hundred and ninety four thousand. <laughs> Wow, that's impressive. <laughs> Thanks, man. That is impressive. Okay, so um, what are some of your favorite moments that you've had when you've been collaborating with other people on music? Okay. Uh, well, the probably the you know on the all the tension, all the excitement in building and arranging hoist the cars you know uh, yo i've got this idea uh what what if we do the final like this and this part like that uh who sings that who wants to sing that and all that stuff probably hoist the colors and also working on my original music like working on before Wallace control was pretty cool it was my first song i was really excited and i found myself very comfortable with my producer Stefano Cece. and yeah and also working on you know all the other 
songs. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. I was, I, I'll ask you about some of that work a little bit later, like especially with Hoist of Colors, but. Okay. Um, yeah. So those are some of his best or favorite moments. Um, all right. So moving on to like tips and tricks. So do you have any tips, tricks, or life hacks for anyone that sings or wants to sing? Uh, okay. First of all, don't be ashamed. There are a lot of people who have a crazy voice, but they don't sing because they're ashamed of it. They, they're like too shy to do it. And I'd say to these people, just let it flow. You, you have this gift, use it. Start posting on social media because it can really give, like they can really give you some huge opportunities as we have seen with, you know, the whole base community and pretty much every big creator. Mm -hmm. Social medias can really give you a lot of good things, but also bad things. Yeah. Then for singers, I would say stay relaxed, drink plenty of water, which is a thing I, I should do too. I, I don't drink a lot of water, but I really should. Uh, then I, I think that really helped me was uh, trying to uh, imitate the sound of my you know, my favorite parts of a song, it might have been a bass line, might have been a high note. I try to emulate the sound and then, like, uh, change it and make it my own, but, like, to get used to uh, using that sound. Uh, mm -hmm. I, like, the first thing you have to do is take an take example from the best or the ones you like, and slowly you'll get able to, you'll be able to build your own style and originality. Mm -hmm. Then another thing, don't don't give up. Like keep posting, keep singing. Results will come over time. It takes a lot of time. It's a lot of stress. It's a lot of it's a lot of like why why am I am I not getting results? But it's it's an algorithm, and you 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 will never get what you want. Pretty much, like most of the times, you'll not get what you expect from your videos. So it's important to. Be focused and not lose your temper over, over like a flop video. Right. I, I learned this the hard way. It took me a lot to accept it, but I finally man managed to do it. Um, for bass singers, I would say learn how to use subharmonics, growls, inhale singing, throat bass, every technique that can help you singing lower because with a good DAW and some good mixing skills, you can get every sound you want. Pretty much, yeah. Yeah, it's it, it's really useful. If I if I want a certain type of bass for like a bass line or you know in the background, I can use a different technique. So adapt the techniques to what you need in that moment. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Just still a, um, yeah. Just a very quick point to the audience. Yeah. Um, it's perfectly acceptable to learn extended techniques, but make sure you don't neglect your natural chest voice in place yes. of trying to learn these extended techniques. Yeah, that that's a really good point. Like you, you, you should also train your chest voice, which is, you know, the, the main thing for a bass, like the, the best notes for a bass are going to come out in chest voice. There's no doubt about it. Right. And to train the chest the trend to chest voice is, is really hard, especially for going lower. Going higher is easier. Like you, you can add low notes to your range, but like like uh like Peter Barber said in uh, in the vocal arts episode with Jeff Casalucci. Mm -hmm. No, it was with, with Glenn Miller. Uh like your chest range is your low chest range is, is that one. It, it, and it's gonna say it, it's gonna stay pretty much the same. You can maybe un unlock let's say to semi to two steps lower but not much it's gonna stay the same so your goal is to make the notes you already have stronger and low notes especially for bass for basses come around like in in, in four, like a bass reaches its maximal potential on on, on his 40s slash 50s mm -hmm. like russian octavists can can all sing that powerful and low and you'll notice they're all like in their 40s and 50s that's because they're it's in this moment they they have their maximum potential yeah so it's gonna take time 
focus on what you have and maybe try getting some high notes like I, like I did, for example, and low notes will come over time. Oh, you, yes. can, you can do much about it. But I will say just make sure you train the natural chest range and make sure you train it more than you train extended techniques. So that way you're not neglecting your natural chest voice because ultimately yeah, yeah. your natural chest voice is what matters the most. Yes. If you didn't have a natural chest voice, you couldn't do extended techniques in the first place. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. So um, now we're going to have a bit of a short break in questions from me. And uh, what we're going to do now is transition to you for a second. We're going to give you some time to advertise, self-promote, let the audience know what you've got going on in your life, if anything, um, and just share what you've got going on with us. You know, you got you have the floor for the next few minutes to kind of advertise talk about any merch any plans for the future you okay. have the floor okay wait um, like should so, i so any so like if like in provide like advertise music you know if you have any merchandise or just kind of let us know what you got going on in your music okay life. Okay, okay, okay okay let me think about something <laughs> like this part is gonna be if i did right so also before he jumps in make sure you check out his his original music it is fantastic i've heard it myself thanks you thank you man uh, yeah i i i have three songs on spotify uh, two are the same two can i can i start again yeah okay uh so yeah thanks man and yeah i have released three songs on spotify uh two are the two different versions of the same song uh the song is called before we lose control and it's a song about um i mean an internal dialogue with myself as a child, wondering why did I not warn myself about what was about to happen in the future. I had some pretty tough years in middle school, especially, but I mean, it's the situation. The situation is better now, and yeah, I released a, a piano ballad version, and then a an alternative version, which is like the complete opposite. It's um, a more techno disco version and yeah. then i released a full a couple of cover of uh, when the party's over by billy eilish and yeah if you want to check out my music you can check the link in my uh, in my bio on my tiktok account and you'll find everything you need there so thank you so much if you're gonna do it yeah and i will also provide his um his the er, links down in the description of this video below so that way you can check out his information his, his social medias will be there his tiktok will be there Spotify, all that good stuff. It'll all be there. Thanks, man. Thank you. So if you are done with your advertising piece here, we're going to move into the next little section where I give my guests an opportunity to ask me any questions, should they have any. So you have the floor to ask me anything you want to for the next few minutes. Okay. Okay. Um, when, when did you start this, uh, this podcast? So... Um, I actually started, well, let's see. So it's September now. So I started in November of last year. So I'm coming up on okay. uh, one year, uh, about one year of operation here on the channel. So I started doing them in about November of last year. Okay. So it's been 10 months now. And yeah. I mean, I, I see you have a pretty cool setup. You, 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 you're doing this pretty seriously. So that, that's the thing I like. Yeah. I, I like it. I have, see, I bought this mic. So this mic that I have is an Aston Origin. Um, okay. This mic is more geared towards um, like voice acting or speech or like speeches, okay. anything vocal okay. related. But I I didn't realize that at the time that it's actually not quite as good for recording like vocals per se for music. But okay. that's what I do it for now, mostly that and either the podcast, but I, I bought this at, at the time. I didn't realize that I was going to be using this mic for YouTube, but I realized it was a perfect opportunity to use it because the low range on this mic is pretty beefy. So, I mean, it makes your voice. Okay, sound. Nice. nice. So, and and, and I, what's your lowest note, man? So my lowest note. So if we're talking natural chest range, yeah, like lowest, all sorts of range. Like all sorts of techniques and ranges. 
So the lowest I've ever gone in my natural chest voice, we'll, we'll go with that first. My lowest is a, a G sharp one in okay. morning voice after having pretty heavy vocal trauma the, the, the night before. I had just you had karaoke a, night, right? <laughs> I, I had went to a football game and I was oh. yelling, yelling my heart out. I woke up the next morning and I sighed down to a G sharp. Oh, that's and nice, man. That's nice. I have I, I did not know that I had it in me. Um, my use my daily usable lowest note I'd say is a B flat, the low B oh. flat. Um, oh. and then so my lowest note subharmonic I would say was a I've done an A zero one time. Okay. Okay. Uh, the, the next lowest I've done a B flat zero a couple times. I do, I'm able to do a, I'm, act, I'm able to access a C one every day. I okay. just, um, I've, I've not been very good at subharmonics because I'm still understanding how they work and how to do them. Okay. But the lowest subharmonic I've, I can do on a daily basis is a C one probably. Okay. That's, that's pretty good, man. I have. I also like the inhale bass. That's my preferred extended technique because oh, okay. it's easiest for me. Because I can literally just go, and I it, it, I, I can just do it on a dime. It's re- yeah. really quick and easy. So it's, it's the opposite for me. Like I I can I can do, I can do that at all. Like it's it's not my thing. Not able to do inhale at all. Um, I, I know I can sometimes control it, but it's not a technique. Of, like, I, I'm not a big fan of the technique. Like, I I can feel it sounds different, but like in beatbox, it works perfectly. Like, it's, oh, it's yeah. Perfect. And with the right mixing, right mic, and right everything, it sounds awesome. So the um, one of the duets that I did with you, um, I think it was the one that you did with Gabby Scar. Yeah, yeah. Um, she did Sweet Dreams. You did the bass line. I did some... And you did a beatboxing. I did a beatbox. And at the end, do you remember that low note that I did at the very end? It was a G1. Yes, G1. That was Inhale. That took yeah. a oh. that took a lot of uh, mixing to get that one. But okay. it is it is my favorite technique to use. I thought it was subharmonics. <laughs> Believe... I mean, I can do subs, but I'm better at Inhale. So... No, see, yeah, my subharmonics are gassed right now, but yeah, I'll give it another they, shot. Go and come, um, yeah, yeah, but yeah, those are uh, some of my lowest notes. Um, I think th- the highest I've ever done in my natural chest range was a C sharp five. Um, now if we're venturing out of natural chest range, we're talking. Um, I've dipped into whistle tones and I've gone up to a D six. Okay. That's nice. The, that's the quality nice. was poor, but I was able it's to still squeak it out. It's, it's still a D six. You don't throw it away. <laughs> I've done it a couple times and it's not really usable that well, but Hey, I still did it, I guess. So yeah, <laughs> I guess it counts. <laughs> yeah. The, the highest for me was like a C7. It was, Ooh. yeah, that was totally random. I, I was live one day. Uh, my, my phone was here. And I was just trying to sing low notes. At, at some point, I I started using this weird falsetto slash whistle technique. And I could go up all the way to a C7. And Ooh. yeah, I, I will never be able to do that again in my whole life. <laughs> Never. That, that's crazy. <laughs> yeah, but it's still the C seven. That's like that's Mariah Carey level of like whistle tones. It's really high, like through the clouds high. Yeah, it was really high, but I I don't think it will ever happen again. No, probably not. <laughs> nah. So. Yeah. Yeah. Any any other questions you got for me? Um. I do have others. Uh, what what like uh, what kind of what software do you use to mix your videos? 
So uh, as far as like the duets and or or more of like the YouTube videos. Uh, for duets and then YouTube videos. Okay, so for um, for my duets, whenever I'm doing audio, if I'm doing uh, vocals, uh, I use or my doll that I use, I use Reaper. Okay. Um, so I do my audio through Reaper, and then whenever I'm doing the actual video for the TikTok itself, I usually do Premiere Pro. Some it depends okay. if I'm if I'm a little bit pressed for time, I'll use Premiere Rush. But most of the time I use Premiere Pro and then I just kind of mesh the audio together in Premiere Pro. Okay. 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 And uh, for actual YouTube, like if, whenever I'm making videos, I use Premiere Pro for everything. Okay. okay. It, is, is it good? Like, I enjoy it a lot. Um, the price is not that bad for what you get. If you buy like a package, you can get like several programs in one. See, I'm... Like I do photography on the side for um, primarily sports where I live for some kids okay. that go to high school around here. And okay. um, I have a photography package through the creators of Premiere Pro. They have okay. uh, Lightroom and they have also got Photoshop and they've got like sev- like a couple of other programs all bundled in one. And then they okay. also have like a video makers kind of package where they have like Premiere Pro, Rush, and like a couple of other programs. Okay, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I have packages for both, and they're they're monthly prices. So, but they're really not that bad. And the programs themselves, they are like really detailed. Like you can change all all kinds of stuff. It is crazy how detailed these programs are. You can do a lot okay. of stuff with them. Uh, and how much does it cost? Um, so U.S. dollars, I'm thinking, I'm trying to remember. So if you do one individual program and you and you pay monthly for it, I pay, I believe it's 11 U.S. dollars a month. So I don't oh. know if or that'll probably translate to a different currency amount for you, but uh, uh, it's like it's 10, about, 10 euros for month, about, per month. About 10. So, it, okay, it so that sounds probably right then. Yeah. But for me, I think it's like either ten or eleven dollars a month for one program at a time. But if you do bundles, like it's a little bit cheaper. You get like three or four programs for like thirty bucks a month or something like that. Oh, okay. But yeah, I liked them a lot. They they served me well. I, I might try it out. I I have to change the absolutely like I I can keep using the feature results. Like it's it's really good. Don't get me wrong, but. There are better softwares for um, audio editing and stuff. Like DaVinci is meant for video editing, and then like the audio part is secondary. You know, uh, there aren't a lot of plugins. I when I did the uh, one one month free trial for FL Studio, the mixes were much better. Yeah, and there were two hundred more options than the ones you have in DaVinci for audio editing. For video editing is an in, in, I have no problems with DaVinci in and I'm I think I'm gonna use it if I change like audio software. But mm-hmm. I'm, I'm still gonna use it for video editing. So yeah. the uh, Premiere Pro is complicated. It's not super user friendly, but okay. it is inc- once you learn how to use it, it is incredible. Like it is so useful. You you can pretty it's Premiere Pro almost has like a bit of a mini doll inside of itself. It you can you can do a lot of stuff with audio inside of video editor. It is very okay. useful. Okay. So if you decide to go with it, it's really useful. Okay, thanks, man. Yeah. Any others for me? Uh, uh, when did you start singing? Ooh, that's a good one. So, um, I have been singing for several years, but, okay. uh, so I started back, I would say when I was maybe 14 or 15, right okay. after the point to where my voice dropped it, it only dropped a little bit. I remember hearing like, Oh, my voice is kind of low at the time. It, I was singing down to an E flat two in the mornings and I'm like, Ooh, I'm a bass now. Yeah. I'm a bass. Yeah. <laughs> so I definitely wasn't a bass. I would sing in church. I would sing with the choir. I had an E flat too. I was like, okay, so I'm a bass now. I wasn't, but that was the, about the point in time where I started singing. I was like 14, 15. And then mm-hmm. 
I just kept, I just sang in choirs for a little while, sang with friends. And then up until about maybe about a year and a half, two, maybe three years ago, I kind of just stopped singing. It's, I don't really have a reason as to why I just, I guess I got busy and I kind of forgot about the fact that I could sing and I just got busy with life. But once I realized that, Hey, this channel's picking back up. I can probably start putting out my own work once I like continue to get my name out there and everything. I started singing again. And I was like, okay, so maybe I do have a good singing voice with me. But I'd say I started right around when I was about age fourteen or so. Okay, okay. You did, you did the right thing. You, you did the right thing. Like you, you kept going. So yeah, that's yeah, the right. I, thing. You, I, you shouldn't. I, I deal with imposter syndrome quite a bit and I, yeah. I th- yeah, so I'm, I'm like, I don't love the way my voice sounds whenever I go and listen back to it, but I guess that's part of the reason why I guess I stopped singing a little bit. I mean, my life being busy at the time and I just didn't have as much time to, to sing as, as I wanted to, but I also mm-hmm. would think I would sit there and I'd listen to myself sing after recording and I'm like, who is that? <laughs> Ew. You know, I get that. I get that. Like, yeah, I, I think I, I think no, nobody actually likes their voice when listen back. I sometimes like it, but most of the times I never totally satisfied with it. I just post it and yeah, the it's, way it goes, it goes. <laughs> it seems way more common in the music industry than I thought. But there are actually a lot of musicians and singers out there that don't like the way they sound. Yeah, I mean, I, I think it's pretty normal. Like, as I said, I think all, like, you know, content creators, singers, we all have this kind of common trait of being in our own world and always wanting to put the best out of our work. And every little mistake we hear, we get frustrated because this it, it, it hasn't gone as we were expecting. Right. So, uh, yeah, I think it's a, I mean, it's a really common thing, so... Yeah. You you just have to to live with it. <laughs> yeah. And it's eventually I know something that helps me and this is a tip that I'm going to put out there real quick for some of the younger singers out there. If you don't like the way you sound, something that I do whenever I'm recording music of my own or recording vocals for someone is I will make sure that I don't if I don't have to go back and listen to it, I won't. And if I'm recording myself singing, I'll make sure that the track I just recorded is muted and I'll make sure it doesn't play at any point in time. If you knew you sang it right, go ahead and send it off or go ahead and record it, save it, and then don't listen to it. That's yeah, something that's, that's, that's something that helped me. This is useful, yeah. But I sometimes do that. The, uh, the best thing that we can advise you to do, I guess, Davide, you might be able to say the same thing. Um, the best thing we can say to people that are not confident in how they sound, just send it. What's the worst thing that could happen, right? Wait, 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 what, my, what, what did you say before? So the best thing that I can say to people that don't like the way they, their voice sounds, we could probably both say is that just send it. And what's the worst that could happen? Nothing. <laughs> the worst that could happen is that you don't like the way you sound and that's it. Yeah, and you still have all the time, all the takes you want to make it right. Mm-hmm. So just keep yeah. going. And going plus, to- right. something else that I figured out too, and then we'll move on. Uh, something else I've also figured out, folks, is if you go to sing, there's usually always at least one person on the face of this planet that will hear your voice and like the way you sound. Yeah. And we'll want to hear more. Yeah. There, there's always someone. Like, there are so many chances, opportunities, and, and people that it, it's really hard to find someone that does not like what you do. So it, it, you'll find mm-hmm. your niche, your little corner in the world where people will love you and support mm-hmm. your music. Because, like, nowadays, it's not everyone on the same thing like 10 years ago. Now it's everyone on their little niche and like everything is getting more, um, how can I say? I, I don't know the term in English. Like if I do this gesture, do, do you do you get what I mean? So let me look at the camera. So what were you doing again? Like 
like this. Everything is getting more. There, there's plenty of uh, derivations for every single thing nowadays. Yeah, yeah. So you, you, you'll have your niche. You, you can yeah. find that. You can definitely find your niche, and it's like it's like I just said. Just send it. Yeah. Just send it. Any more questions for me, brother? I don't know. I know. I I don't, I don't think I I have any others. Okay. Cool. So with those questions answered, we're going to migrate back into some questions that I have for you. We have nope. just a few more and then we'll uh, wrap this thing up. So, oh. um, so for, this is for, this is a group related question. So for any groups that you have worked with in the past, what is one of the funniest memories that you share with one of those groups that you've worked with? Let me think about. Oh, <laughs> okay. So uh, this was back in March of last year, and I, ne I never had a viral video back then. I still was pretty unknown to even even to the base community, and the weatherman just released uh, "Misty Mountains." So I, I was like, I was crazy about that song. Like, it, it's a really good song. Yeah. And yeah, at some point, uh, the weatherman. Follow me back and ask me if I want to be a part of the community project. And at that time, <laughs> music well, still was like, it wasn't the main goal of my life yet. Yeah. And I was really unprofessional. So when they contacted me, I answered, Oh my God, yes, I would love to participate. In. <laughs> it might have been a little bit too much. But <laughs> like, oh my God, yes. <laughs> oh my God, yes. <laughs> fangirling a little bit yeah absolutely <laughs> but uh, i i still fangirl a lot when like a person i really you know love like follows follows me back or send me a message like when avi kaplan uh followed me back i was screaming like a little girl <laughs> <laughs> literally like yeah. it, it was when he posted hoist the colors last year and i commented on a video like almost as a joke like, should I add bass? And he said, go for it. <laughs> That's cool. And Avi Kaplan said it. I have to do it. Yeah. He, I don't, he, he said it. I don't remember if I've seen this one or not. I need to go back through the catalog and watch it. Yeah, but it, it didn't get a lot of views. It it, it, it it even had like a really bad ratio. It has it had like 2,000 likes and 60,000 views. So, it, yeah, it didn't really go well, but Avi started following me and I was literally like jumping and screaming like a cheerleader. <laughs> <laughs> I I can I can jump on the bandwagon and say that I've reacted the same way. Um so I've so whenever so I'm going to try to make sure I say this without revealing too much information. Oh. Um I am currently in touch with some incredible people that it's hard for me to maintain my professionalism because of who they are and knowing that they would speak to me about coming onto my YouTube channel and talking to me about music. It's I, I re I'm reacting the same way on the inside and it's okay. so hard to, it's so hard to main that maintain that professionality. Sometimes <laughs> it's just like, Oh my God. It is so hard. <laughs> I totally get that. When I was at Academy, like, and, and like I, on the first days, I was too shy to talk to Avi. Like, he's the bass god. He, he wants to talk with me. Who am I? <laughs> Who am I? Right. <laughs> but I mean, I, it's yeah. even like baffling to me. Like, even now, to the place that I'm in, the people that I've had on the podcast before, I had Glenn Miller. I had. I've had Liz Garozzo who did that who did that song with voice play uh, in the Hall of the Mountain King. Um, yeah. I got Luke Taylor for crying out loud, who's been on American Idol. Love you, brother. Hope you're doing well. By the way, um, uh, video. I, I I I'll I'll have to check it out. <laughs> yeah, he he came on. Luke is an awesome guy. Yeah. Um, I, I let's think see. I think my first person that I freaked out about when I, when he contacted me back about getting on the channel, I think it was Bobby. I think I freaked out a little bit when Bobby said, yeah, let's do it. 
Okay. And I was like, <laughs> am I dreaming? <laughs> but yeah, I, I can totally relate to that, hundred percent. Yeah, that's it, 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 it's a beautiful feeling, even though like you you feel super like um, um, I I wouldn't say uncomfortable, but you're like, what am I even doing here? What like how am I <laughs> how am I even worthy to be in the same room? Yeah. <laughs> Right. <laughs> oh yeah, and when I like in on um, like after I don't know maybe four or five days, I started talking to Abby more often, and once in a while, I I would say, uh, I I can't believe this is real, Abby. Thank you so much, <laughs> like totally randomly, and yeah, thinking about it, it might have been a little bit too much, but I, I <laughs> know, was always so supportive. So yeah, shout out to Abby Kaplan. I love you. <laughs> yeah, one day. I will have him on the channel. I've been trying for months and it's it's very difficult, but I will have him on the channel. So the day that I do get him on the channel, you'll be the first to know. Okay, that's great. <laughs> he actually doesn't like use DMs a lot. Like I sometimes try to reach him out on TikTok on DMs, but he never answers. But I mean, I get it. He, he might be super busy. I've I've been trying to work with his manager, but things are just like, he's, he's a very busy person and it's, yeah. it's, it's hard to line a day up to do something like that, but I'm definitely going to try to have him on at some point. Yeah. I mean, yeah. So, uh, you've kind of sort of answered this question already, but we're going to ask it anyway. Um, so what are your thoughts on extended techniques as a whole when it comes to music? <laughs> Um, I think they're underrated and not enough appreciated. Uh, they give, I, I wouldn't say they give less value, but since they're as accessible to everyone, like singing an F1 isn't that hard anymore. Mm -hmm. Like if, even, uh, you know, I, I've seen some girls singing A1 since our harmonics and, and that's crazy. Like, yes, it is. <laughs> You need to be a really low alto to, to sing an A1 in subs. But yeah, I, I think they should be known more, like be explored at least, or, you know, you, you can at least know what a sub harmonic is or like a growl or like it, it's, these are things we naturally do. Everyone do does growls. Everyone does sub harmonics. They just don't notice. Mm -hmm. They should be more known and more appreciated even like in, the more popular music mm -hmm. uh, like in pop songs you never hear a bass you never hear a sub harmonic you never hear a growl note and one of my goals like one of the goals in my music is to let people know my world like even bass singing sub harmonics growls and all that sort of stuff yeah so I yeah, they, they Make sure you explore it a little bit, folks. If you are into singing at all in any capacity, definitely give an extended technique a try. You never know what you can incorporate into your music. Exactly. So, um, we kind of also sort of answered this before, but what extended techniques do you use in your music? Okay. Uh, in my original music, I haven't used any uh, extended techniques yet. I was saying like a, a HSB one in uh, before Wooless Control and a chest A1. Oh, wait, 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 wait. No, what am I saying? Yeah, uh, I've used growls in the background of When a Party's Over and I've sung a chest A1 in there. Uh, but yeah, in my videos, I usually use chest voice, sub harmonics, growl. I really rarely use throat bass and vibration bass. I mm -hmm. can't inhale like I I'm not good at it at all. I can do the leap roll. Uh, I, I don't know if it sounded good, but I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I don't know I don't know any other bass techniques. I, I guess there are others. <laughs> yeah. So um, uh, the next question on my list was answered at the very beginning where I ask if people have perfect pitch, which you do have. First guest on the podcast so far that does have it. Right. I, um, so t I'm going to go off on a tangent here real quick. Um, 
I did not know when I when I realized I had perfect pitch. I didn't. I, to me, it felt like it was completely normal, and everyone else had access to this. No, wait. I, oh wait, so wait, wait, wait. Like, yeah, 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 like perfect pitch. I'm like, doesn't everyone have this ability? And one of my friends just straight up looked me dead in the face. He said, "No, not everybody <laughs> has this." <laughs> And I was I like, I don't, I, it seems normal to me. Yeah. It seems totally normal to me, but I didn't know that it wasn't at least until I found out I had perfect pitch. Yeah. That's pretty much how it, how it went for me. Like my, I, I was okay. Now when I, when I started to, no, wait, what am I saying? No, wait. I mean, I, I, I usually thought it was normal to, you know, replicate the sounds I would hear a note, or like the, you know, let, let's do an example, like uh, the siren of a of an ambulance. Mm-hmm. For me, it's it's normal to know what notes are they, which like, which, yeah, which notes are they, and even the octave. But other people just don't. They don't even remember the sequence of notes. And mm-hmm. for me, why why can't you do that? It's, it's so easy. It's like notes. <laughs> yeah, it's it, it's just, it's so crazy to me. I was just like, you don't know what note that is, and people like some people can't match pitch, and I'm I'm like, oh, that's easy. Or if someone says like, here, sing an A flat, okay, ah, uh, I mean, yeah, to me, I mean, to me, it's easy peasy, but I didn't know that it wasn't that easy for everybody. Yeah, yeah, it was completely mind blowing to me. I found out. Like when, when I, when I was trying to, like I, it was the, like the first months I found out I had perfect pitch and I would tell my classmates, okay, now let, let's like, let's sing in harmony together. Uh, you sing, uh, you sing, uh, 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 and mm-hmm. like it would, the sound that would come after I said one, two, three would be the most awful thing I could hear. <laughs> Because like, but you, but we didn't understand that. Like we didn't understand that other people don't know what we know. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. For, for us, it's perfectly normal. Even at Academy, like it, it, it took some, like maybe sometimes I, I would have, okay, now let's try, you, you try doing this harmony. Uh, I know. I'm, I'm in love with the shape of you. Push and pull like a magnet do. And like, and no, they just wouldn't get the harmony. Right. Yeah. <laughs> It, it's just it's crazy how that happens i'm like i don't know how others don't know this and then i'm like wait i have a gift <laughs> i thought this yeah. was normal <laughs> it's pretty crazy all right so i've got just a couple more questions for you and they okay. we will wrap this up so uh what is one of your favorite things about being a singer and this can be anything it's you can do a lot of things with it like i'm just you know when when i'm bored i just think about something i want to sing i just look for a video i sing it it's my passion i i'm uh, immersed into it yeah uh, it's probably the best thing like you you can feel the time passing you you're sad you sing something you're happy you, you're sad. You write some sad lyrics or think of a sad melody. You write it down, try, try to do something with it. Or like you hear a sound, you want to make it a cappella. So you analyze each part of the song <clears throat> to try getting as many sounds as possible to recreate the sound. Yeah, it's just a world you emerge into and it's beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> it's amazing what you can do with the human voice and just to be yeah. able to sing. Yeah. I, I have ever since I've kind of come onto the scene in the music scene and music world i've truly come to recognize how incredible the human voice is at making beautiful noise yeah it is insane to me like i learned i i've heard a lot of crazy things i've heard a lot of beautiful things with the human voice i've heard a lot of a lot of crazy vocals and good singers and stuff i'm still blown away to every day that passes by yeah. something new don't get tired of it Never get tired of it. Something that I have to agree with you wholeheartedly on when it comes to about being a singer is 
knowing what the voice is capable of and what you're able to do with it. It's a beautiful feeling when you find out you can do like a particular sound or a new sound. It's, it's it. Will you add new things every day? Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. So last question I have for you, then we're getting ready to wrap this thing up. So if you could steal a fellow singer's voice or any singer's voice for that matter, living or passed on already, who would it be and why? Can I mix different singers? <laughs> sure. Go for it. So I'd love to have like Slatopolsky's resonance. Like, yeah, Slatopolsky's resonance with uh, J.D. Sumner's timber. And also like, I don't know, high notes like Mitch Grassi. Do you have like a really wide range? I mean, yeah, I can, I, I, I do have a pretty wide range, but you know, I, I would love to sound like Mitch, Mitch Grassi on my fifth octave, you know, <laughs> instead that, of using like, weak yeah. falsetto. Mm -hmm. I, I have to agree with you there. If I were to steal a voice, I would probably pick JD Sumner just sim not just simply because he's got the literally lowest recorded natural chest voice of all time. Yeah. Yeah. It was an a G That's a G feat. <laughs> yeah. I think I think it was everyone I know that he did the C1 in Way on Down, but someone told me that he had done a G0 at one point. Yeah, it was like in a, he used to like do this extremely long slide. Like, mm -hmm. mm. and just continue and continue and continue. It's like it was never going to stop. He holds the note like he goes to the lowest note. He holds it like a, a few seconds and then goes back slowly. And like you, you can hear every note in the like first octave of the piano clearly, and just pure chest sounding. He was like, I I wish he was still alive today. Oh, me too. I absolutely loved his voice. And I'm sure you've probably seen some of those videos where he sang with the Temptations and he would just casually yeah. sing sing the E1s. Like he's literally just dropping an E1 like it's nothing. Yeah, yeah he's he just in there. Like no, like no problem. And yeah, he, was, he was crazy. Total legend. I, yeah. I think he was a inspiration for like uh, you know, third Ravenscroft, uh, Lon Paris. Mm -hmm. it, I think he was like the, you know, first generation bass, then like third Ravenscroft, uh, Lon Paris, and then like Jeff and Avi and Tim Faust. You know, I, I kind of imagine it like a generational thing. Mm -hmm. And yeah, JD Sumner is, is the father of all basses. <laughs> yeah, I, I have to agree with you on that. He's he's a legend he, among them all. He's the grandpa of, of all basses. He's the grandpa of all the basses. <clears throat> Folks, he looks like grandpa. Yeah, hundred percent. Oh, excuse, excuse me while I stretch, folks. Don't Guys, worry. we have reached the end of this episode of the podcast. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. If you guys are enjoying the content. Like I said at the beginning of the video, make sure you drop a thumbs up. Comments down below. They help with the algorithm, even if it's just a smiley face. If you are enjoying the content to the point of wanting to contribute to the channel more than you are, there is a link to my Patreon in the description below. If you choose to be that generous, it is not required to enjoy my content by any means. It allows me to continue bringing guests on like Davide and bring more people in in the future. Guys, once again, this has been Ethan Drew on the Vocast. Davide, it was good to have you, brother. We will probably do another touch base soon. And yeah. Thank you, touch, man. Guys, we love you. Take care of yourselves, and we will see you in the next video. Bye. Bye, guys.